Good morning, Brenda. Akshay this side. Thank you so much for having me on your Inno- uh, AccuCom Speaks with Innovators today. Uh, it's a pleasure with you be to here today. Well, I think it's really wonderful that you found the time to talk to our viewers because you have such an interesting story, and I can't wait for you to start sharing how you what journey you went through to get to where you are today. Uh, thank you so much for the warm words. It's very elating. So I started programming at a very early age. I started uh, HTML and CSS when I was eight years old, and I had a couple of books in my home. I don't know where they came from, but I think it was a good luck. So I started doing HTML, CSS at a very early age, and then I used to create web pages, but. Soon I realized web pages need a kind of backend to work on. Then I learned PHP. So by the time I was ten years old, I I actually learned around eight to ten languages, which included C, Java, C sharp, HTML, CSS, PHP, DHTML. Then I started my first uh, startup when I was in uh, when I was eleven years old, and that startup was into cloud. So this startup when I started. So the biggie biggie names in this industry like AWS, DigitalOcean, Heroku, these players have not had not penetrated in India. So what I used to do was I used to buy dedicated servers around offshore countries like Netherlands, uh, Belgium, Germany, and then sell hosting packages on them. So I used to manage manage the entire dedicated server, and I used to also manage customers. So. At the top time of my first startup, I had around 20 servers around the world, and I, I had around 300 uh, customers located in different parts of the globe. But uh, I had to face my exams, which are very uh, crucial in the Indian education system, and that is I had that is why I had to sell my startup. So I sold my first startup at the age of 14, and I sold it at a good amount of money, around thirty thousand dollars. And I sold it to a Mumbai-based company. So yeah, that was my first successful stint in the business line. Wow, I I I can't tell you what I was doing when I was 11 years old, but it was definitely <laughs> not anything close to that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So tell me a bit more about how you went about establishing your current company, and tell us a bit about you know what what you guys are doing and what your future plans are. Okay, uh, so right now, so my company's name is Novostack. So I had this name, Novostack, when I when I went into college, like when I was in first year of my college, I had this name in my mind. So what the name means is it's it's made up of two words, Novo plus Stack. So Novo means new, and Stack is a terminology that we use in development of things. So it's like stack of languages, stack of frameworks. So it's it's a kind of new stack. So what what's happening right now is that there are multiple tons of development companies, but the main problem with them is that they are not innovating. So what we at Novostack do is we keep on innovating. We keep on adding more things to our shelf. So suppose when a customer comes to us, we don't like we don't suggest them a technology because we have resources for them. We suggest them a technology which should be perfect for their business. That is what we call the right technology selection (RTS). And that is why we are uh, growing up and scaling up at the current scale. So, currently, Novostack is a digital transformation firm. Digital transformation is a term in which you digitalize a company from uh, from to to move into di- digital world. So that is what we currently do. Our five years down the line plan is to get into management consulting because we are also getting into digital marketing, a uh, content branding and strategy. So that is what I believe is the five years down the line plan. Well, that's really interesting because AccuCom uh, does a lot of digital transformations, and our trend, our approach, is that we are just trying to take people who are using old, efficient platforms and mm-hmm. move them to digital tra- platforms. Okay. And this is really important on two levels. Number Correct. one, you can't have an efficient operation. If mm-hmm. you're using old technology, it just mm-hmm. doesn't work. But yeah. the second is that you can't expand your business if mm-hmm. you cannot attract the mm-hmm. young people who are learning the latest technology. 
Uh -huh. And so you're, you're, many companies are in this kind of quandary where uh -huh. they are holding on to their legacy because they say, if it's not, if it's not broken, why should we fix it? Correct. And it takes a lot to get them to understand that mm -hmm. these people that you've mm -hmm. developed these relationships for like 20 years are people that you are going to have to have relationships forever. Correct. Meanwhile, when you get these wonderful off the shelf products, mm -hmm. they are current. Mm -hmm. Your future employees are learning that technology. Mm -hmm. And so you have this ability and what we try to do is try to talk our, our customers into the blend. You get uh -huh. your new employees who understand the technology. You have your existing employees that understand uh -huh. the old technology and we get uh -huh. them to collaborate on how to create a new efficient process that will go into the cloud. Absolutely. I completely understand that. What we have to observe is that there is a paradigm shift in the kind of technologies that power the current companies. So everything is moving towards AI, ML, blockchain, and these technologies, because these technologies are meant to replace the current system that has been there since the inception of web, since the inception as to how companies work. And I'm grateful that somebody as senior as you, somebody as experienced as you, is now working in this technology, is now working in this kind of business. So I salute Acucom, and I believe you guys are up to something good. Oh yes, we, we, we pride ourselves on trying to be innovators and we've mm -hmm. done a lot, but this is all about you. So I don't <laughs> want to take away from, from, yeah. <laughs> from your, your view. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me, since you probably have many, many points in your life where you are most proud, why don't mm -hmm. you tell me what you were most proud about 10 years ago that you had accomplished? Uh, so. I would I would give you a simple, uh, very very small anecdote as to what what was my proudest moment. So I was in in Indian education system. It's it's called class eight. So when I was in my class eight, that was like uh, ten years old. That is that is when I made my first money off the internet. So I remember I was I made like uh, two thousand rupees. That was around uh, forty bucks, forty US dollars at that time. And from that 2000 rupees, I bought uh, sweets for everybody in my family. So that was something very proud for me. Like, you, you know how pocket money system works in, in the entire world, right? Like kids are dependent on their parents to give them pocket money so they can utilize that. But that was the first time when I provided something back to my family. And the happiness on the faces, uh, on the face of my father, brother, sister, mother, they were priceless. Like, I am. It's, it's like it's like more than 12 years since that time, but I can still I still have that image in my mind as to how their faces as to how their smile turned as soon as I gave them uh, the sweets and told them this is from my earned money. So that is one of my most proudest moments. Well, that is fantastic. Thank you. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what kind of advice you are? You are an innovator in mm -hmm. in software. What kind of advice do you give those folks? Because we have, you know, thousands of people around the world who are developing apps and trying to do startups. What kind of advice mm -hmm. would you give? Uh, the most important advice that I would give to people who are currently in my uh, industry is that the first thing is that you need to have trust on yourself. You need to have belief on yourself. Like everybody has a skill and we need to leverage it. We need to understand what skill we have where we can place that skill and how we can bring out more from us. So the, what, what I learned in my life is there are two things. One thing that you love doing and one thing that you're good at. So if you can find something you love doing and you have the ability to, to make money out of that particular thing, like you, you, you'll be the most happiest person. As far as software is considered, so people need to realize that there, there has to be, there's going to be a paradigm shift in all industries. So I'll give you a very basic example as to how the HR, the human resources industry is going to change, is going to trans, uh, uh, transform in the, coming, in, in, in the coming next five years. So right now, when companies hire employees, they try to understand what the particular employee does. So one employee can be good at marketing, one employee can be uh, good at uh, development, one employee does sales, but what's going to happen is that HRs will now try to understand what they love doing. 
suppose somebody is good at photography somebody is good at sales but he never got the opportunity to do sales because he has been a developer since his start uh, since his uh, original career so now hr people are going to hire people depending on what they love and then they are going to place them in the company in that particular position so this will benefit people because they will get money for doing what they love and that is that is what's going to increase the productivity of the person at the revenues for the company and overall improve the culture and another thing that we have to understand is that uh, artificial intelligence machine learning uh, blockchain this is this is going to revolutionize the market we we at nos like recently built a product based on blockchain in which in which uh, we were working with a medical based company and we revolutionized the entire process as to how people can buy medicines online and all the record keeping can be done and it can never be erased so people need to upskill themselves you don't you, you don't need to remain where you started from you need to constantly innovate you need to constantly upskill yourself so it's like you you cannot learn everything in one day so just try to improve yourself 0.01% every day every day beat saturday beat sunday saturday sunday is not for us right now right now is the life to work hard to make a life and then we can enjoy our life later on well that really is great great advice because um my story is that um i was the first person in my family to go to mm-hmm. college so we okay. didn't really have i didn't have anybody to to tell me what what's the right career to choose mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. people said they will always need accounts mm-hmm. so i went although i love technology I and and back back in the day technology was considered a risky career. Mm-hmm. I became an accountant and then I went to work for uh an accounting firm and I became a mm-hmm. CPA and I got to be uh a CFO. Mm-hmm. And I was lucky enough to work for a gentleman who just basically he when he liked somebody and he had kind of a group of people around him that he that he liked He okay. just asked you to do things even if it wasn't in your job description. Mm-hmm. And he asked me to do a hospital information system. Mm-hmm. And I said, "Okay." And he said, "Well, we'll hire, you know, the right people and get all the support." But I but, you know, because I had spent a lot of time in healthcare, mm-hmm. I understood, you know, the parameters and what was needed. And once I did that, and i felt so good i had i had introduced people to technology and all mm-hmm. of a sudden what didn't work is now working and it's mm-hmm. working smoothly and i loved it and i loved it so much that i ran off and uh, learned <laughs> one of the large companies and you know get a pmp and and mm-hmm. and be- went into uh project management be- mm-hmm. and i continue to do it because mm-hmm. I absolutely love the face of people who are uh maybe what considered clerical and mm-hmm. here they are they're the backbone of any company. Correct. And these folks are now being introduced to something that makes their life easier. So mm-hmm. I make this statement, you know, mm-hmm. less fingers more brain. And <laughs> that's with, right. with with the use of technology, these brilliant people can begin to examine why why are we doing it this way why aren't we doing it this way and mm-hmm. i just absolutely love that feeling uh i understand that i want to commend you that uh you took a difficult step because nobody in your family went to college but i believe you were a visionary from an early age in uh, from an early age in your life so this has been the same thing with me uh i am the first person in my entire family in the past 100 years that is in the business otherwise my entire family is in the service industry like everybody has a good job but i am the first person who has a business and sometimes that makes me proud as well but like you said that you initially faced some difficulties it happened with me as well but i had the right kind of people with me who advised and guided me at each and every step so i am forever thankful to them Yes, I too uh, was lucky to have mentors all along the way because I right. I tell everybody nobody gets to anywhere 
and unless somebody else helped push them there. And, that's, and that's kind of, you know, my, my, my parents were, were Southern and in, mm -hmm. in the South, they have tons of sayings. And so I, I parrot a lot of the sayings of my, my parents. Um, mm -hmm. So is there any closing remarks that you think uh, would be important for people to take away from, from listening to, to us talk? Uh, the most important factor that I think entrepreneurs should have is focus. They need to focus on a particular thing. They should not uh, like swindle here from there. There needs to be a very sharp focus. So you just need to understand what you want to achieve. What's your vision? And eventually all the steps leading to it, they will come to you eventually. Like they will come to you normally because when you have a clear vision, you will automatically know what to do, how to do. The most important thing is that you have to work hard every day. Like there is no weekends for us. Like any anybody that is in my age, the weekend term is not made for us. Like Friday night for you should not be a party night. Friday night for you should be something that you are going to enjoy learning some new things, upskilling yourself, making more connections who would be helping your business. So work hard every day grind every day and you will be successful you will be successful it's 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 a normal fact you just need to work hard you just need to work hard you don't you don't have to lose focus you don't have to lose confidence in yourself and just stay sharp on your focus well thank you so much for those closing remarks it's been a no pleasure problem. to talk with you same here thank you so much for having me today